uh, talking about the project tool called MMO. It's been our internal tool for a while, and uh, we we talk about this like <laughs> in our internal folks and say, okay, why don't we open source this because somebody may use it. So what what we actually do with MMO? It's Modeling for microservice orchestrator, and I'm, I want to talk why we want to use or why we use modeling flows, why we use microservices, and why we actually need some tool to orchestrate all of that. So, the outline of this talk, uh, we'll just briefly talk about clean architecture, how we should structure our code, and then about microservices and about more repos, and why we actually need continuous integration and continuous delivery and all the tools around there, and then. I'll go into MMO as a tool and just briefly go through what it can actually do for you right now and why we need your help because it's in alpha right now and we're heading to beta. So, the clean architecture. Uh, did any, uh, have any, anybody seen this before? What's up? Nobody? Really? <laughs> All right. So, uh, time to explain. Uh, what clean architecture does is uh, when, when you look at the core, uh, you want these parts of your code to be as, as independent as, it can, as, as they can be. Why? Because these are your enterprise code rules or your, uh, your business, business rules. This means that you want this to be independent of any database and framework and UI, anything that you have in your code. Uh, why, is, why is this called clean architecture? Is, uh, because when, for example, you say, okay, I don't want to use this database anymore, I want to use some other data store or anything else, uh, all you need to do is you need to change the third layer, of, for example, of your adapters, interfaces between uh, the debates, for example, frameworks, that, uh, ORMs, and so on. Uh, but it can't cause uh, like your business rules uh, to fall or to fail. Um, and this is really crucial in low architectural microservices because you want this to be desktop. Uh, and you want to test all your use cases or all your business enterprise rules or your rules, uh, but you don't need to actually test all the ORMs and all the stuff because it's already tested. So, when you know what's clean architecture, we now know that we want this in each our service. If it's monthly, if it's microservice, we want this everywhere because there's something called dependency rule. And the dependency rule says that you want your dependencies in code to go only one way. So, I'll go back a lot. Uh, what, what this means is that uh, UI knows about presenters, presenters knows about use cases, use cases know about entities, but not other way around. So when you look at microservices, or why we want microservices, uh, there, are, there are like small things maybe, and uh, this is not for all teams. Maybe, maybe there are teams that are really good at building monoliths, uh, there are teams good at building uh, microservices, but what we prefer using microservices is because it gives us kind of like um, limits or limitations on what we can build and where we can build our software. And it makes problems smaller because you actually put only only like a piece of code into a single microservice and then uh, sim like <laughs> a simple code to another microservice and so on and so on. So when, so when something burns, you know when it, where it burns and you can fix that. Uh, the other thing is they are really simple or simple to understand and really with knowledge. So when somebody comes to your team, when someone new comes to your team, uh, they can easily grab the code and see what's really happening. And really good thing about microservices is that you have API for everything, which means there's, there's no need for anybody uh, to actually go and dig into the code but everything is, is described by the API. Now, there are certain cons or uh, why we don't want to use microservices. And, uh, these are kind of architectural, which means if you don't have experience in building uh, APIs or architectures, microservices, uh, this will be a big, a big pain point uh, because you actually need to decide what will be the contracts between your microservices. Uh, if you if you want to change these things uh, like in development or even in production, uh, this will be a big pain. So you need to actually uh, start designing uh, from like design from the start what you really want from all the microservices. 
And this should be really small pieces of code, right? So it shouldn't be a hard design, but we all know it's, it's hard sometimes. <laughs> so the other thing is dependencies. And this is, this is where everything starts to fail because uh, you need to change one microservice, but some microservices depend on this microservice. And so you need to make sure that all contracts between all microservices uh, are free. And now, instead of having just one deploy button, you have 200 because you have 200 microservices, uh, because everything is decoupled and uh, everything runs, runs on its own CI pipelines and everything. So uh, there's kind of like management overhead that you get, uh, and you need to know when it's worth it, uh, when it's worth like having all, all this stuff. And now, these, these are architectures of Amazon and Netflix. Uh, this is not complete, just these are all, all features, but it's called Vesta architecture. And you can see like dependencies between microservices here. So uh, now you can see how much management they need to have to actually handle all this stuff. And then we go to more repos. Um, this will be faster. <laughs> so why why use why use my my repos? Uh, is anybody using here my repos? Yeah. Everybody one is using like separate repos for for everything. All right. So uh, we use my repos for every project because we uh, we actually like couple all the services together to one to one repo, and this makes testing easier for our CI and CD pipelines. Uh, this is because every time you push code to a repository, uh, everything gets tested every time, which means you know uh, if something fails, you broke either your code or code of somebody else because all tests run. Uh, you don't need submodules, so if there are dependencies between microservices, you don't really need to care about this. Uh, and then there's uh, build feedback for more repo, which means every time you uh, every time you push code again, uh, something may fail because you change something, and maybe that may not be your code, it may be some dependency. And I'm going to show why this is really important because uh, MMO actually generates some stuff. And then component sharing and refactoring. I think uh, uh, the, like one of the big pains of of having something in production, having something big in production, is refactoring or renaming stuff on all the places, and when you forget something, everything burns suddenly. So uh, my repo kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of easier to, to refactor this stuff in my repos. And cons, uh, you have single CI, CI pipeline, or you can have like, more pipelines, but uh, it's like every time you push something, uh, this main pipeline will run, uh, which means it may cost you some time. Uh, and you may need to deploy all the services again every time, uh, which means you get irritated deploys, which is not really what microservices want, uh, but we have tools already for that, so it's all right. Uh, it's really hard to maintain for large teams, and large teams I mean like uh, 30, 40 people, uh, which means it's not great for us. Uh, and the biggest, the biggest pain for us was that if master fails, if somebody merges something to master and it fails, then Nobody can work actually because every uh, every new branch from master will fail also. So uh, these these are the cons of more repos. I think there are more uh, also plus and also cons, and uh, you can imagine them. But <laughs> um, I go to CI and CD, and this is the last last topic before I go to actually MMO. Uh, and CI and CD pipelines are for model it's kind of easy. Uh, this is what you can get. Uh, for example. Uh, when using Jenkins and multiple environments, dev environment, Canary deployments, and so on and so on, everything that you want in production. And you can imagine that you need to do this for every single microservice that you want. So uh, instead of like, having a single pipeline, you now have, you now have 100 pipelines uh, which you need to run together. And you need to know when to deploy or where some, something fails and if you can deploy actually. And so, we decided to create a tool for that. Uh, it's not a silver bullet. It, it actually, like, there are just small things just right now. Uh, but we, we try to keep in mind that there are some problems that we need to solve. 
and we are trying to solve this through our uh, scaffolding and code generation uh, because we feel like these are the these are the big pains for us and one of the biggest pains for for microservice architectures was, was building all the API stuff around it right so you got like a small piece of code that only fetches something from a database and returns it but now you need like whole networking layer about it which says like which do does validation and authorization and all this stuff so building this and maintaining this takes a lot of time and still you you're just using some uh, really simple residuals and this is what we wanted to address uh, and we also wanted to address that when something when something gets broken for example on, on backend or front end then we need to know this and the build needs to fail uh, this is what, what I talked about before, that uh, if we have a really good CI pipeline, which we need to have uh, in when we're using microservices, uh, then something must fail if something's broken or somebody broke something. So what my MMO is, it's microservice orchestrator, as I said, it supports scaffolding code generation, and it has plugins. Now, the idea of plugins in MMO is really simple, but we feel it's, it's really powerful. And that's because everything in MMO is Docker native or Docker container. Uh, why we why we did this was because we wanted to run we wanted to run MMO on CI on Docker native CIs, and we wanted like MMO to run everywhere. If it's like a Windows, if it's a Linux or anything else, we wanted the same experience for for everyone. So that's why we that's why we package all our plugins to Docker containers so you can run them without MMO, with MMO, or however you want. And uh, one thing is it's still in alpha. So uh, we will accept any issues that <laughs> uh, you can put them in any other repos. Uh, the first one is for MMO, the, first part will, uh, the second one is for plugins uh, that I will show. So uh, if you have any issues, just put them there and we can handle them. All right. Uh, as I said before, we wanted to <coughs> automate everything that's repetitive uh, in our code, which means uh, changing something in the API doesn't mean we need to uh, we need to look at all the APIs and then refactor all of the stuff, but it will automatically re regenerate for us. And uh, we're using gRPC as a communication protocol for now, uh, which means that all the microservices that we will generate through MMO will uh, will by default use gRPC as a communication protocol. And this has some advantages, and I will talk about it. Uh, installation is really easy. Uh, you can just go with it. So scaffolding. Uh, this one is really easy, uh, how to create a new MMO app. Uh, what we use is Gron. Uh, not sure if anybody knows Gron, but you can you can hook in any, any CI that you want. Uh, so there's a pipeline for Gron right now. And there's one, one file that's really important, and it's MMO uh, Why we have this file is it's a single file. You won't, you won't have it in any other folders because it's my repo. So <laughs> we, we maintain only a single file. And uh, it has, has all the configuration for your world repo. So anytime you want to change something, plugins or anything, uh, you can do this <coughs> in this file. Now, there's uh, one. There's one difference between MMO and other CI tools, and that's MMO is supposed to run on localhost, not on CI. Uh, this is what our plugins are, right, are doing right now. They, we don't want uh, MMO to run on every CI run. We actually want MMO to run locally and then push all the code that it generates to the repo. Uh, why we want this? Uh, because we feel like it's um, it's easier, for, uh, it's easier for all the developers if, if we just generate all, all the stuff uh, because we would need to maintain all the old versions uh, on the CI. Now, scaffolding is easy. Uh, creating a new service, you just call MMO at service within your, your application. Now, this creates a wall structure for your service. Uh, you, can, you can basically create how many services you want. So uh, this way, wall, wall structures will be already generated for you. And uh, there are two things that I want to mention. The first one is protofile. The protofile here uh, has all, all the protobuf or the, all, all the gRPC related stuff. Uh, you, you basically 
put in any any model that you have, any uh, any API that you want to have, anything that's communication related. And then there's deployment, and this is because uh, we support Kubernetes deployments, uh, which means this will generate for you. And if, if you apply uh, if you apply these or if you apply uh, recursively on the repo for Kubernetes, this should deploy all the services. Uh, now, the plugin ecosystem. Uh, right now, we have five plugins, so we're we're basically looking for for new new plugins or for uh, new ideas. So, if you have any ideas, uh, just come to me, and we can we can talk about what we can do with with Omno and what plugins we can create. Because the whole idea of Omno is to have a lot of plugins, and then we can generate whatever we want. Uh, so, the first one is uh, the most important for us. That's uh, gRPC generation, which means uh, if you put anything into into your product files uh, that's API related, every what we'll do is we'll regenerate the files for you, uh, and you you get the SDK and all this stuff. Uh, do you guys know gRPC or Cosmos? Okay. So uh, we'll basically generate all the SDKs, all the stuff for you. Uh, it has all the Google Proto and the plugins in it, so you can you can basically without any installation you can use uh, this plugin to generate your gRPC plugins. Now the Gen Proto interface, uh, this one is really easy. Also, you don't need to uh, manually type in uh, all the methods that you that you want to implement in your interface of gRPC. Uh, we'll just generate it for you. So uh, when you look in the service, then you just you already have generated stuff and you need to just put in your code if you don't want to play. Uh, the third one, this is a really interesting one, uh, is gRPC Gateway. And right now there's, I, I think there's no way right now the, uh, to actually communicate from web uh, or from, from browser to gRPC. Uh, there are some there are some protocols already like gRPC web and something in progress, uh, but it's not impossible. So uh, gRPC Gateway uh, what it does, it, it takes uh, your gRPC configuration and it creates the HTTP server for you. So it will basically pro basically proxy between JSON and, and Protopath uh, and create the HTTP server for you from your from your program. Uh, then there's Swagger. Uh, if there are if there are any guys uh, that they are using you know, Swagger or API API or anything that they have on front end. Uh, this is a really great thing for any front-end guys uh, because you can basically get all your API definition into a really nice UI and then generate uh, other stuff like clients and these things. And the last one is uh, Angular client. So uh, this is basically when, when I talked about failing builds. Uh, this is where most of our builds I think fail right now because when somebody does something on backend, then it regenerates the Angular client. So if API changes, then we know that something is broken also on front end, uh, which means it needs to be fixed. So uh, I think the fails, of, uh, like build fails, count of build fails uh, increased with this plugin, but uh, number of fails in production and development will actually increase uh, thanks to this type of so, uh, MMA up and YAML with plugins. This is the really simple, uh, really simple structure of, of the um, of the MMA YAML file. The plugin you see here at the top is a global plugin. So we have global and local plugins. Uh, global plugins run for the whole project, while local pl uh, local plugins run only for local uh, services. Which means that uh, Swagger will also always run on the whole project and generate one Swagger file for whole micro microservice model repo. Uh, but you can say that, for example, Quick Service will run gRPC gateway, but something else like authorization service will only run gRPC and you don't need any gateway there. And then, there's a big snippet, and this is for the file. So, this is where you want to put every everything. Uh, that's networking related, or that's uh, where where you say what you what uh, what kind of uh, request or what kind of API do you expose? Uh, this is really simple. Uh, 
I, I just go with this create book and get all books. Uh, it will just get book and return the book. It should, for example, save the database or anything like that. But from this file, uh, we're able to then generate interfaces, tests. We're able to generate Swagger files. We're able to generate uh, front-end clients and all this stuff. So uh, if anybody's uh, OK with, with this configuration, then you actually don't need to write anything else than a business code or business logic after this and test. Um, so this is what it generates. Uh, if we just if we took just the, the create book, uh, not the get version and get, get all books, uh, this is what it generates. It generates the boilerplate for you. So uh, there's already implemented the, the interface here is already implemented. So uh, you can just plug in here your code and start the server. Now, the HTTP gateway. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was, we wanted, we wanted to use gRPC while we need to expose the HTTP for front-end guys, right? So the, the thing, how you, how you do this, it's really easy. Uh, you just put in these four, uh, four lines of code and all HTTP gateway from gRPC is generated for you. Uh, what you do is uh, the first or the second line on the class is the uh, method. So you can put in get, post, fetch, or anything like that. And then you put in like parsing <coughs> arguments or how it should actually parse the stuff that it gets. Uh, if you say um, it, should, it should parse from body, then uh, when, somebody, uh, when somebody sends all the data in JSON and body, it will actually get to the book. Uh, but you can also use uh, query parameters and all this stuff, so it's kind of easy to uh, override these things or use them. And SDKs. Uh, one one of the really good things for us was this is where where you don't need to actually write your own code for code for uh, APIs because everything is generated for you, which means that this client that's here. Uh, as books or book service, uh, that's actually a client that's generated for you by by the gRPC uh, gRPC plugin, which means you can only import uh, import the communication with the client and directly call uh, call its services methods. So I think that's all for me. Thank you. If you have any questions. Right? So thank you.